Never mind who you thought I was. I'm Rick James, bitch. The one and only, the original. I was born by the river. I was shaking that ass. Bending over, popping twister. I was making that cat. Bring that ass here, boy. Turn up! Fuck you, man. Great day, beautiful people, and welcome to another wonderful, magical episode <laughs> at Illustrate Radio. How are you doing, first of all? Because I got to greet my beauty. How are you? I am here. <laughs> <laughs> my I wonderful co host. I am here. Yeah. Um, it's been an interesting couple of days for you, girl. Okay. I can't. You know what? I can't wait to hear all about it. Even if I got to hear about it off air, because we need to chop it up. I got some tea for you too, boo. Uh, so before we get into the show, we got to make sure that we ch- take care of church business, like my lovely co-host T Gray loves to say. Um, so y'all make sure that you are all are live with us on YouTube. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up, that share, that subscribe, because we need you. Just like we need one another. You know what I'm saying? Um, also tune in with us on Twitch. We're live there too. Just Google us because we are every there, everywhere, but um shit, we're everywhere. Okay. WEMSradio.com as well. Live, hit that live button. And yeah, and if you are are not um able to make today's show, no worries, no worries at all, because you can definitely catch us on seven on demand on that Roku TV. Just make sure you hit Illustrate TV. And also you can subscribe there too that I just discovered um, this past weekend. So yay, hopefully, eventually we're getting something off of, the, <laughs> off of these subscriptions. But anyway, we have an awesome show for you all tonight and a cool hot topic um, because apparently it's been trending and I am totally not on the internet. So I'm just going to jump right in. We are Mrs. Stiletto, but she'll be with us because she's going to be singing in the background sooner or later. So she'll join us later. And yeah. All right. Breathe. Okay. All right. (laughs) Sometimes I got to slow it down because I have been (laughs) on a high. So um, when I'm on a high, I'm a little high in frequency and jittery as well. So I'm going to get into just my luck because I cannot wait. Yay. So I am so much into you are what you attract. And part of that is making sure that you are what you want to be. And that is cocooning and how to do so. And I call cocooning because I like to say that's the journey of falling in love with yourself. Um, There are a couple of things. Hold on. Wait one second because I had it pulled up. Boom. Because I got to make sure that my notes is up because I'll be trying to write stuff down so I remember it. And that way I'm not lingering too long. Um, But one of the things that I, the things that I love to do, um, Hold on, let me see where my notes, where my notes. Okay. So a major thing is stop comparing yourself to others because that is one of the major faults because we are all unique and magical beings um, and we're not the same. We're not going to, we're not clones. Hold on one second because, hold on, hold on, because baby girl is in the background and this is illustrative. <laughs> so this is what we do. All right. Thank you for that. Yes, please close my door. (laughs) And another thing is don't worry about others' opinions and what they think of you. Um, Unless they're valid. Like sometimes opinions are not really, everybody got one because just like an asshole, right? Um, But constructive, 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 criticism um and so from someone who loves you is not really like an opinion unless they're you know if they're not helping they're hindering so make sure it's offering solutions and have give yourself grace allow yourself to make mistakes and know that um we are not what we once were we're not our past our past does not define us today this second this moment you can choose to move forward in that as well um and remember that your value does not rely on your looks but it relies lies in your health because you cannot attract uh anything that is healthy if you are toxic yourself and if it's not healthy it's what it's toxic um and don't talking about that don't be afraid to let go of toxic people as well okay because if you feel drained they're draining you um if they're always talking about negativity If their body language is negative, if their demeanor is negative, if the way they talk to their kids is negative, like 
just let it go because you can learn to love people from what I like to say is outside the stadium while you scalping tickets. Okay. Um, this is something that I also struggle with and I work through every day is processing my fears. I tend to be my biggest, biggest, biggest critic. Um, and one of my fears is working through that. And my procrastination is a result of that. So I'm actively working on that. And that is something that you should face every day. Um, and try your hardest to work through. And if you cannot work through it yourself, oh, thank you, script writers, that I look very tropical. I appreciate that. Uh, if you can't work through it yourself, you might need to get some additional help. And y'all know that I'm big on therapy, talking to a reliable family member or friend and all that other shit. Um, trust yourself to make good decisions for yourself as well. Um, like I said, I question myself a lot when it comes to certain things. But once I started to, once I went through this process and I fell in love with myself, my intuition has been lit. It's like, so yeah, trust yourself because you know, all right? If you allow yourself to feel, um, take every opportunity. I'm so big on this, to be present, to be present in a moment and to create something of your own that belongs to you and that no one can take away, which is my poetry um, for me. And I'm very present whenever I'm out with whomever. I try to put my phone down, not taking too many pictures. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to take a photo because y'all know they call me Miss Paparazzi. Um, but it's really for memories. And I post after I'm enjoying myself. Another major thing is to put yourself first. Um, make sure that you're always putting yourself first and don't feel bad about that. Like, don't feel bad also about saying no. Give yourself also time to grow. Ooh, this is my flow. Bars! Um, and make sure you pamper yourself and you're taking care of your inner and your outer and you're doing that shadow work. Um, I know this is going to sound weird, but you need, in order to know love you have to know what sadness is in order to know what joy is you have to um know how what pain is as well so allow yourself to feel those things fully and wholeheartedly um and being present with yourself and your emotions is a very major major thing be bold y'all know that being bold is something that i thrive on every day um as well pop a color whatever and see the beautiful see the beauty in simple things um, I like to take the scenic route home. Y'all see that I love plants. I feel like being outside with nature, just quiet and still at night is one of the most beautiful things and most peaceful things ever. Add some water to that. And the last but not least, lucky number 13, um, make sure you be kind to yourself, you know, um, and that goes along with giving yourself grace. So be good to yourself, all of that good shit. And that is it for just my luck. And I took my full three and a half, five minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I just be trying to give, give, some, give as much goodness as I possibly can. But um, it's, it's nothing wrong with it. By all means. <laughs> Which time as you like, like it's cool. Um, happy Wednesday, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get into my love and So today's love and is love and what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I know that most of us have heard that question more than half our lives. And then we grew up, people stopped asking, people stopped talking about it as if there was an ending to that chapter. So my challenge for you all is to still think about that. We're adults now. And yeah, we're grown to a certain extent. We're paying our bills, we're investing, we're having children, we're raising them. But have we truly grown up to be what we want to be? Are we still searching for something? Are we still looking for something? So if you could, in a sense, in a word, put what you want to be when you grow up, even now at whatever age you are into a word, what would that word be? So for me, when I grow up, you guys, I want to be prolific. And I know you probably say of all words to choose. A lot of times in this community, in the urban community, we hear the word prolific. It's normally in reference to 
artistry is normally in reference to rappers who's the most prolific who's who's left the message who's whatever so what prolific is when you are referring to a person is producing fruit you guys it is being fruitful it is causing abundant growth um, in generations or in reproduction and it's marked by abundant inventiveness and productivity so i tell you all today don't ever stop thinking about what you want to be when you grow up wherever you are there's still growth to happen wherever you are there's still something else to attain there's still some something else to aspire to and even though i've taken a great journey as far as media is concerned and i'm having a fantastic ride as far as comedy is concerned and these are dreams that i didn't know that i even had until my 30s mid 30s at that um so these are still new for me which is why I say, hey, when I grow up, there are things that I still want to do. When I mature in media, when I mature in comedy, there's still going to be other things that I'm going to want to follow that. But what is that for me? What is that for you? What do you want to be truly when you grow up? So I hope that when I do, that I do leave a mark, that I do leave something abundant that you can take with you, that generations behind this generation can tell you something that Tigray said, something that Tigray made them laugh, something that they learned, something that they took with them, either in the bedroom or outside the bedroom, whether it's on stage or off stage. Like, I want to be fruitful. I want to be able to multiply into you all's lives so that when you sit back 20 years from now, 30 years from now, maybe when I am officially grown, you could say, you know what? T. Gray was prolific. So for you all, I want you to find that thing, find that word, find whatever it is you want to be when you grow up. Yes, you made me, I was sitting here and I'm sitting here looking, I'm just like, that is some dope shit because we're still growing and, um, we still can actually achieve whatever it is that we want to. That was beautiful, T. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Oh, Don't I'm you. sorry. Layla said, tell her. She said she saw you on the screen. She's like, oh, my God. She's so pretty. Oh, I love her makeup in that color. <laughs> Girl, if you knew what it took to get this face, this half beat that I got. <laughs> She's like, Layla, I did not look like this. An hour ago. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's she trying to talk all soft. Like, you yes, When I tell you that this hair, these brows did not exist, these lashes did not happen, this flawless look. Look, boo, let me tell you something. <laughs> we call those added incentives because we are already, hold on, wait. We are already the benefit, the everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a little bit of an incentive to splash and sprinkle. Trust me, we ain't got to be too much. Don't none of this shit match. Look yeah. at it do now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it do now. Yes. Look at it do now. Yes. Okay, so like I told y'all, we have an awesome show for you all tonight. Um, we're going to get straight into Spit That Ishes. Okay, so this story kind of took me back a little bit because I didn't really know how to react about it. But apparently a 48 year old, a 48 year grudge, hold on, it's like a 50 year grudge of an ex husband between an ex-husband and an ex-wife and the wife has been deceased for um i'm not sure how many years however there's video live video footage of um him actually being captured by the deceased son michael andrew murphy um he said that this has been going on for months and months and officially he was able to confront him and to catch him with it um yeah, I, 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 his sister, they said they, okay, so I was trying to read part of the story and actually get into it. And excuse me, y'all, because usually I'm trying not to read from the page, but we had a little technical difficulty um, with the script. So anyway, um, they said that they got weeks and months of this evidence. And that took me back too, because I'm trying to figure out if I see anyone shitting on my or urinating on my mother's grave, I'm not waiting weeks and months for anything. I, I, it, it's the first instant. So that took me back first. And then this man was leaving Ziploc bags of feces on the, 
and pin because that the video that you all just saw. I don't know how to feel about this, T. I think this is disgusting. Over a 50 year grad, you haven't been married for so long. The fact that your current wife is also encouraging this behavior, you really, she must have really did a number on you, bro. So, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> how bad of a bitch you gotta be for a nigga still wanna pee on your grave? I don't mm -hmm. mean no harm. Huh? And I don't promote nobody being negative or violent. That bitch was bad. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know that? I don't think I could be that angry at a person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I could ever hold that much. And for him to go out there and do that for the wife to help him, is, let's, that's beside the point. Because behind every dumbass man is a dumbass woman, too. It got to be. Mm -hmm. it's a dumber well, person behind that it was that, sh that happened that made him feel that bad i feel like it's other ways it's other things you could have done he hasn't healed clearly but i don't know i ain't never been that upset with a person and i've and i've had anger in my heart for a long time for people <laughs> well, who got never, that kind of time never to the point that i'd be like you know what if this nigga died i'm just gonna get on <laughs> Now, I'm gonna be quite honest. My my lowest, okay. I'm gonna give y'all my low point and let y'all know how white people still went further than I did. At my low point, I was an EMT and I was like, "Hey, if this dude not breathing, I'm gonna wait a minute before I stop." <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's yeah. like the worst. But I didn't. But I didn't actually do it. It wasn't like he actually fell out. But in the in it had he, I would have been like, <laughs> your your she said, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. welcome in the letter. See how that just boom, 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 boom. It's okay. Look, it's straight radio. We do what the fuck. No, I'm doing. trying to get my sound on. I don't have my sound. My sound is not connected. I don't know why, and I probably need that. Well, but we got some time because we about to get through these topics because you know um, oh i got a topic coolio just died <gasps> no. you gotta do a whole segment I, you gotta get the music get down. i just seen it was like oh as i walk through the valley, the valley the the shadow shadow of death. i take a look at my life Ooh. and realize what's left yes because i have been uh, what oh so I, while mm -hmm. T Bray looks up the story because I'm definitely gonna you can report I just that. Had to look real, look look I wanted them bitch sued you for real let me <laughs> no I want you to look so that we can actually talk oh. about it because that's that's actually something that's currently happening that's right now you know what I'm saying um but let's talk about some actually love and light as well um John Cena the WWE wrestler has made the Guinness Book of World Records for the most make a wish foundation granting the most make a wish foundation oh. wishes um it's 650 actually so that's pretty dope um I'm not going to get into too much detail about that however I think that what he's doing is a great thing the make a wish foundation um is a beautiful thing I'm trying not to be biased right now and actually report the story <laughs> Because, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. These kids, I guess it's just their one wish to actually meet or see someone. And he's making that happen for them. Um, that's very selfless of you. And I hope he's also, um, along with donating time, because time is very expensive. People think that you can, you have a lot of time as well. But um, there's a lot of, I'm sorry. Why? What's wrong? Because I want to say something and I'm trying not to because it's really about the children and the fact that he's actually granting these wishes. And I like to speak in love and light about everything. So I'm trying not to be negative. The beauty in this, it, the beauty in this all, um, the beauty in all of this is the fact that he's putting smiles on children's faces and making it happen. So that's what's up. But um, yeah, the Make-A-Wish Foundation as a whole is a different story. So you don't like John Cena? No, I love John Cena. John Cena, cool as shit. You know, WWE fighting, that's what's up. But I'm talking about the foundation itself. There's a lot of politics and um, things that they uh, 
spot they pro, not part what's the word Con, not condone not promote not sponsor but support mm. so that i definitely don't agree with and we're just gonna leave it at that so t yeah did you come up with anything for the and i will be reading from the phone that's uh, fine you can definitely shoot i'm so, reading for the phone too, <laughs> you guys so there was a phone call placed to um, law enforcement around 4 p.m. Uh, Coolio died this evening, you guys. Um, he was at a friend's house. A friend said he went to the bathroom. And after a while, he began to call his name. He, there was no response. And when he went to the bathroom, he found him on the floor. When the paramedics arrived, he was already dead on the scene once they got there. Um, so there is going to be an autopsy. However, they say they don't see any foul play, but there is going to be an autopsy. Um, he did go into cardiac arrest is presumably what they think. He went into cardiac arrest, but whatever the cause of the cardiac arrest, we don't know. So that is what's happening so far. Um, that's wow. sad though. You know, <laughs> you guys, we spend so much time acting like tomorrow is a given like mm -hmm. i was fucked up a few weeks ago when david arnold passed i was fucked up i was fucked up i didn't really like get, but i was i was fucked up for a second um because this was somebody who was actively trying to be better in their health and in their everything and you know just prepared and we do these things because we know hey you know it's not a given, but then you have so many people who act like have this life like, oh, I got all these tomorrows. I got all the time in the world. I got years. I got, this. we don't, we don't, we don't. Ain't no telling what that man went through in that bathroom. I don't know Coolio's life, but you could get up to go take a shit and not come back. Right, you're bad and not get up in the morning, and motherfuckers is really out here acting entitled, after than larger than life, and and they're bigger than God. Yo, I'm just, I'm over it as a whole. I'm over it on people mm. with that mentality, and like if nothing else, you guys, people who survived the whole pandemic, we should all be like, grab this life by the motherfucking horns, bitch, and ride the goddamn bull. Like, you ain't never gonna fall. Like, like that's really the mentality that we should have, that we should be operating in, and we should be functioning in on the daily. Like, this, because what if, what if today was my last day? Would I be satisfied with how my day I am? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if, and and I'm not, you know, I normally don't be on those major soapbox on here, but this is just for a second. If today was your last day, would you be satisfied, not happy, but no. satisfied with how it ended and how it began? No. Would you be okay with that? And mm -hmm. if not, then fucking tomorrow better be that day. The next day after that, if you get it. No, this very second, this very moment. Take those <laughs> steps right now because you might not even wake up tomorrow. Oh you know what I'm saying? I That's what I was saying. But baby, you know, he had the little show and had kids on the power. Yeah, I know. Um, well, may you rest in power, Julio. I mean, I said Julio, Coolio. She did. Right. She called that nigga Julio. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel as if if he were here, he would have appreciated that. Part of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> he really got the landing strip down the middle of his head. And his he would appreciate that. That's hilarious. Oh. That's actually, I'm sorry, but um, you may you rest, <laughs> may you rest in love and light. And you definitely, I do remember that show too. Um, and that song. Um, definitely will transcend into many generations to come, and yeah, I know because you know, like, our, like this new generation, they ain't never seen no dangerous man, they don't even know about Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah, yeah true, true. They don't even know about the video with Michelle Pfeiffer in it. Mm -hmm. He's walking around with it, don't mess with me. <laughs> 
So yeah, definitely make sure you play that song on on the on the mix if we can get you to, to chime in and everything. Um, so y'all know that DJ Academics he stays in the headlines because he's always coming for somebody. Somebody's always coming back for him. Um, I think that he actually thrives off of uh being so you know these kind of spicy ass topics that he be doing because he really be talking like a girl sometimes but that's what you're supposed to do when you're in that light so my man called everybody dusty he said all these old head rappers that is out right now y'all looking dusty as ever etc etc and um yeah that's just his opinion that's opinion as a young you and some of y'all i'm not trying to be funny i wouldn't say rappers i would just say um legends right some legends can hang it up and um or just try to figure out a different way to like network because trying to dance and you can't dance genuine um you can't hit the moves like you once could when you was so you look like somebody father but i think that that is actually showing a lot of growth because you still got hits and i don't think y'all are dusty because buster Rhymes just did a damn flow the other day and my man let me tell you something about buster okay and my man ll they got it together okay mm -hmm. the body the skin tone everything i ain't seen i haven't seen snoop in person you know what i'm saying um g, -G, 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 -G unit 50 cents still look the fuck good but i don't consider him even old school neither because he's in 2000s era he's not like 80s 90s or whatever and he ain't reached legendary status yet because Snoop and LL, these are like legendary rappers and you calling them dusty, but they still look the fuck good though. And they still get in the bag though. So at the end of the day, like that, I don't even know why they even care to respond about somebody even saying this about him. And so you might know a little bit more about the story because you probably were able to read a little bit further, but that's just my two cents on the shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, 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 you wrapped it up real oh, good. Okay. Uh, they did ask <laughs> academics um, on the Breakfast Club, Charlamagne Ash, you know, did he regret what he said? And he said, here's the thing. I can't apologize for something I didn't do. Like, I didn't call all of them dusty. I never said that money could be equitable in hip hop contributions in the past. That's what I regret. Um, so he kind of feels like, you know, if he knew that this was going to get blown out of reach or if he knew that it was going to get so big that he would have never said it. But the reality of it is, I kind of feel like that's bull. You know your reach. You know your platform. You know right, right. you um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, sure. academics when he speaks is similar to when Vlad gets somebody on there. You know what I mean? It's, it's what people talk about. So you know what you're saying when you say it. If you wanted to tell what you said, you wouldn't have said that shit. That, that's how I feel. <laughs> But he's um, actually said he he was ready to have the conversation too. So I mean, but what's the conversation? That's first, what I want to know. First, what is it that you mean by dusty? Let's start there. You're talking about men who pioneered hip hop. So if you want to go to pioneers, these men are 60, 70. And they look some really of these motherfuckers good. could be older than that when you talk about pine snoop is damn near 60 ll as well so the people who truly pioneer rap are even older than them mm. so who are you talking about are you talking about a group of old niggas who paved the way for djs to have a voice such as yourself are you talking about them like i feel like you gotta mind our manners um we all have an opinion of everything and everybody. But when you say something like that, if you're not ready to back it up, mm -hmm. even if having a conversation, what's the conversation? Right. What is it that you mean by Dusty? Do you mean that they're not well kept, that they're not doing well with their money? Do you mean that the drugs ate up their life? Like, what is it that you mean? Because a lot of the rappers you mentioned LL, Snoop, they got um, Dougie Fresh up there. These are people who are still working. These are people who don't even have to release a song. Never, yeah, ever they again. still on their up. <laughs> like, nigga, like I ain't even got to if I don't want to. These niggas is still fly, and they look. The These niggas good. still put back into it. Like, what do you mean by dusty? That's that maybe that part because I think that the guys who are dusty in the game are not the true pioneers, right? And you know, my thing is, aren't you? Isn't he tired of being so low frequency? No, like, he's like if you're on that kind of platform to me, you have a responsibility to speak power into our people. 
okay? These little giddy giddy, girly girly ass, gossipy ass topics, it, it's just ridiculous. What you need to be doing is saying, you know what? Let's figure out how we can actually be new partners and pave a way as well um, yeah. and recreate some of that magic that they have because it was a lot of camaraderie. Um, even though it was some divisiveness, it was still a lot of camaraderie. There was a lot of success. And again, they're still making money and getting income off of their old shit. Okay. Some of y'all don't even own y'all shit. So at the end of the day, it, it, we need to bridge the gap and speak more life and power into our people. Cause I'm like, I don't even like low frequency topics like this, but i um, talking about low frequency topics and I love Riri. Everybody knows I do, but I feel as though this is um, a sellout move. The fact that she said she was going to, she denounced doing the, okay. So I'm sorry. Riri announced that she'll be performing at the Super Bowl. Previously, mm -hmm. she was offered this deal um, during the Colin Kaepernick and she politely declined and said because of what they did, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. However, there is still a lot of racism and Colin Kaep there's many Colin Kaepernicks um, of ourselves. And even again, I don't watch football now. I know my son is very much into it. Um, so we talk about it, but I'm not going to support it wholeheartedly and watch this because I just think that it's still a lot of divisiveness. We don't have um, a lot of us in leadership, in ownership, and quite frankly, they could fuck that shit because I am, I don't give a fuck about the Super Bowl. So just my opinion, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, Riri, that's, I, I kind of feel a way about you doing that, but again, get that check, get your bread. If you want to sell your soul out um, for a check, then cool, or sell your people out for a check. But um. Yeah, I know you got a kid and a family to feed, so, but sometimes I just feel like it's a bigger picture, but again, I digress. I hear you. I hear you. Um, A couple of things. One, I love the fucking Super Bowl halftime show. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. And the artists don't get paid. Nobody gets a check. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, good. Okay, okay, cool. So but that's I even can, worse. <laughs> I can respect the fact that <laughs> she did sit it out, you know, when I feel like it was appropriate. When it comes to the Super Bowl halftime show, that halftime show is probably one of the biggest live shows for the year in the nation, period. You're talking 15 minutes that trumps every single award show every single bet amas vmas fuck care. that the that 15 minutes of the super bowl gets all the views fuck the game people don't it's, it's more people who don't watch the game and just watch the halftime show so when it comes to her she a billionaire you know what i mean she can do whatever fuck she, you know what i mean at the end of the day it's not a money grab but I think that it is to get Rihanna back to 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 the fans to see her perform, to hear her voice, especially when it's been so much about you know when you're gonna get an album, when we're gonna get an album, when we're gonna get an album. Like she's had all these other extra additional pressures, and so now I feel like I feel like this is a quiet flex. I feel like I feel like this is a little bit of a quiet flex. Like oh bitch, I had this baby, but I still got it. And I feel like it's probably also the prequel to a dope ass album. So as a fan, I'm looking forward to seeing her tear that shit up. I want to see her do her thing as a fan. Like, I don't really care too since if my team ain't playing the Super Bowl, I don't care no way. It, and that, that, that's how I am. Um, whether or not to support it or not support it based on the racism of the NFL, that's life. I feel like it's everything. There is racism in every single thing that we do, that we speak, that we see. And if we take the time to turn things on and off for when the racism stops, we would never be on one. And I think that sometimes mm -hmm. to empower not them, but us is to say, yeah, maybe fuck your four quarters, but this 15 minutes, and she ain't getting paid no way. Like this 15 minutes, I'm gonna get this. So 
I I feel like when it comes to to that, there's there's racism in the NBA. There's racism in baseball. There's there's racism in, in everything that we could ever possibly support or not support or whatever. People are always going to be. That's what it is. I think this is more of an individual thing. I I fuck with her. You know what I mean? I fuck with her. Like if I was performing at the Super Bowl. Bitch, I'd be like, lucky you better watch my 15 minutes, bitch. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so, I support so her. They make millions and trillions of dollars off of the commercials that are sold that yeah. are that are on during the Super Bowl. So it's not a money grab directly for her, but it is a money grab off the back of her. So that even makes it even worse that it's free. Um, Rihanna, we I just want us to know that the power that we possess at the end of the day. And it's more so empowering our people in the bigger picture of things. Not so much as empowering their pockets. Fuck them. Fuck the NFL. Fuck all of that shit, right? Um, but if you a billion and trillionaire, you don't need to flex. Because you do your own shows. You're internationally known. And if this is a lead to something else, cool. Because I'm for her. Like, I'm for Re all day. But... Sometimes we got to be for not so much for ourselves, especially when we have the platform to do so. Create our own shit. The Super Bowl wouldn't be anything if 90% of the supporters weren't us because it's us. You know what I'm saying? 90% owner, 90% ownership is them. So like at the end of the day, eh, you know, bigger picture or little flex. I choose bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not watching it either way. I'll see it on Instagram or something like that. I'm sure they'll be having it all over the internet. So you want to, oh, my bad. Go ahead, boo. I had to raise my hand because I just came in the middle of the conversation. Listen, I think that is, I think that's a good look because what other way would you come back out after having a child? Everybody was already antsy for a new album from her. She's already been working on all of this new music. And it's not that she just entertains just us as a group. She is world, she's internet very much. I know, I, that's what I'm saying. You got that kind of leverage. And ahead. she's going to sing all of her regular hits. She's going to mess around, bring out Calvin Harris. She gonna mess around, bring out Shakira down, you know, like all the people going bop, bop, bop. And it's gonna be a bit, what if she bring out Chris Brown? Bitch. I'd be for it. That would take, that would take, I'm gonna see it. I'm sure like, I'm gonna see it. People seen them together not, though not too long ago. Like, I'd be there for it. Yeah, I'm just not gonna watch it live because I'm not going to allow mm -hmm. them to make money off of my people, even her. Like, we the wave. And once we realize that, that we the fucking wave, we not going to be subscribing to their bullshit. Fuck the NFL. We can create something else for us. And everybody would partake in the same fucking way. But you're right. Go ahead, Riri. Shout out to you. You going to mix us up, Stiletto? No, I'm saying nothing. Sorry, y'all. Okay. And I, and I mean, I got to because, you know, tomorrow is hip -hop, DC Hip Hop Fraternity at the Oyster Ball from 5 to 9. Show up, show up, show up. We got so many great artists that's going to be in the building. I will be your DJ and um what's the girl yeah. name? Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. come back to you on that. But we're gonna be there live and direct. Yeah, yeah. But okay, I need so sound for that. So that's where I'm at with this. So all right, so y'all already know we got a hot topic that was trending. So let's just go ahead and jump right into our hot topic. it's not really hot it's actually quite cold <laughs> bing bing boom <laughs> um so yeah the hot topic is is it snitching if you're deceased now why this is trending i don't know is there a story or a movie that's out that i don't know about t Oh, look, I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, is this something I don't know about? So I'm checking. Oh. All right, well, just let me give me my, I'll give my two <laughs> stuff real quick or whatever. 
Um, after someone passes away and something has occurred, if there are any more active members who were involved in said crime, yes, it is still considered snitching because it's poison. It's fruit from the poisonous tree. If I'm still alive, or what they call it, not fruit from the poisonous tree, it's um, statue of limitations. So if the statue of, Lim the statue of limitations has not passed, if there are still active members who were involved in the crime, still alive, yes, it is considered still snitching. After everyone is deceased, you're the only person standing. Statue of limitations can no longer get you either. Um, it's then telling a story. So that's the difference, at least for me. You know what I'm saying? Keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Unless you're willing to take a couple charges yourself. Like, don't implicate anyone, including yourself. Duh. But that's it. I ain't got nothing else for that. So, snitching. Such an interesting word to me. I feel like if I'm actively <laughs> involved in some shit and I tell, okay, yeah, I'm a snitch. But if it really ain't got shit to do with me, am I snitching? Or am, am I snitching? Ain't nothing to do with you. Ain't got nothing to do with you. Why even speak about it? Am I snitching? Like if I seen some shit, and be like, hey, you see this motherfucker over here? <laughs> no, it's, I'm talking about snitching to the feds. We talking about snitching hey, like here's a y'all. If somebody say to you, hey, bitch. You gotta go to jail for 25 years to life or tell us who what whatever who did it. I'd be like, let me if get they my did phone it. all this bitch. Bitch, did you remember when you did it? <laughs> like, I'm like, I no, but you can't do that if the person dead. Yeah, I'm, guess what? If, if I'm remember facing 25 that, years for a deceased person, of course. Remember, remember <laughs> the rest of the story they didn't tell y'all how she came about that dirt, snatched that nigga. Like I feel like, I feel like you're going to reap what you sow, no matter what. Yeah, you know, that's 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 the reality. You're going to reap what you sow, no matter what. Yeah. So even if the person is deceased, if you feel in your heart that you're wrong for telling. <laughs> And you has you've been so convicted, you felt so bad about it, you couldn't do it while they was living that you only had peace enough to do it when they dead. Bitch, when you die, you think they ain't gonna be waiting on you? Like, hold on before you hit them gates, my niggas. Hold, yeah, on. hold up, let's square up. We squirreling up outside like, of the pearlies. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if, if you're ever in something that perplexes you to that point. That you, you know what I mean? That you looking over your shoulder, you scared. The fuck is you doing it for anyway? Like, what you doing it for anyway? And if that person gone, they they gonna get you. They just not gonna get you here. They gonna get your ass though. They just not gonna get you here. It catches up. Pause, pause, pause. Prophet, why do you want us to talk about this? Right, like, is that Chaz or is that supposed to be cheese? About Chaz, what's Chaz pussy? Chaz pussy flavor chips. I just. But well, why would that be something that I want to partake in? Like, well, first of all, I can take this. Sorry, let's talk about it. Let's get into this real quick. Have you all heard about the G shot or the O shot? What no. Is you would know. Please tell me. Them. They're giving women shots in their G spots. In their O spots to make sure that they can have orgasms. Shots, needles to your G no, spot. Oh, no. Injection. Well, no, I take it to a blood clot far no. You Yo. know what I'm saying? Because eventually your body's gonna get numb. Something's gonna happen to you because that is not natural. Why y'all keep wanting to do these unnatural shit to y'all bodies? I don't get it. Like all you gotta do, if you want your G shot, if you want to make sure you have a fucking orgasm, play with your pussy at least three to four times a day, every day for a month straight. Okay, your clitoris will enlarge itself, and eventually, what your doctor is gonna tell you is to stop doing that shit because it's inflamed. Okay, shit. That's what my doctor told me when I got a date with the the first time. Okay, it's only like <laughs> thirty-three or thirty-five percent of women who can have orgasms. Okay, so this other sixty-five percent 
That's because I don't know what they're doing. Learn yourself. Learn your body, but you want to tell It's supposed to be improving (laughs) sexual gratification, you guys. It's a non-surgical procedure to help treat sexual dysfunction. And also helps to treat mild urinary stress issues to improve orgasms in women. But so they can give it to you, like I said, in your your G-spot, you guys, most of you all know when you go in, it's up. It kind of feels ridged. That's where most women mm-hmm. have orgasms mm-hmm. from with internal penetration. But we have hard. like yeah. Yeah, six or seven other spots. So then they got another shot for your old spot. That old spot is what makes women squirt. I can't put no needle inside my vagina. No, I'm scared. I wanted to be like, I got to thought about it. That shit going like, hurt. I, my little drink thick. So. Um, I don't know, like I say that today at the age that I am when I still actively have orgasms. If I ever got to a place or a space where I didn't have orgasms anymore, maybe my answer would be different. But I know that options for women when it comes to our libido and when it comes to us being able to uh, keep our fluids flowing and keep our vaginas tight and keep our, our our zest for sex up. There's not a lot of things as it is for men. They just started pushing us our own pills over the counter. Um, Twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars for one shot. Can I say something though? They, they're getting. They're getting it. They're because y'all know I'm big on health, right? Mm-hmm. That if you eat healthy. There are certain herbs and spices and things that actually increase your nature. Sea moss mm-hmm. is just one of them. And it's yeah. at least, a, it's hundreds of them, mm-hmm. okay, that improve and increase your libido. But our problem is, and I'm going to say it, we're too fucking lazy to do the work because mm-hmm. we're so used to being toxic and laying on our backs that we don't want to stay fluid enough. And some of us, all of the, our body, our body is made to cure itself. Your vagina literally can cure itself if you just rest your front and let it do so. Is it? Mm-hmm. So, at the end of the day, do the fucking work in the research and figure out the things that you can do naturally. Because I'm telling you, those orgasms that are naturally, like stop smoking and drinking. I'm going to actually, I'm taking the oath that I'm going to lay back off of the smoking. I'm not really a drinker that much anyway, so I don't give a fuck about that. But um, lay off those things so that way when I, somebody touches me, I get the fucking chills. Stay off Pornhub. Sometimes the things that we are visually clouding ourselves with are also fucking our sex drive up. And these goddamn toys too. So at the end of the day, figure out a way to do things naturally. Bars. <laughs> I've been on a flow. Hey, babe. <laughs> hey, because my libido, is, I ain't got that kind of problem. My flow is very active and beautiful. So, yeah. I'm so nasty. I, I got mean. some tea, girl. Ooh. No, tea, girl, don't you start because we're about to go too damn deep into shit. <laughs> Like, I know she about to take it all the way. I had a moment before the show started, and when she said what she said, it just like quick reminder, like <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I know, right? Ding, ding, ding. You know, we just love that. We love that for us. <laughs> Tea time after, okay, or like tomorrow, because I know we be tired after the show or whatever. Um. Like yeah, because I'm now I just want to get off the phone. I mean, get off here so I can get on the phone. Um, so anyway, what y'all got going on and coming up? Um, before we close out the show, T, are you still yeah. taking um a slight? No, I'm I'm I am and I'm not. So I am working on a whole new set. So I am about at the, the uh, open mics for the next couple of weeks. I have a show. <laughs> I have two at the end of October. One is in DC, and then I'm going to Ohio to perform at the end of October. You taking um, this with you? Are you driving? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I think I'm a fly. Ohio, close. I'm not Ohio's like garbage. I'm tired. Me fly. So, 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 like, I'm doing a show that Friday here, 
and then I gotta be in Ohio. So oh, I no, I, no, 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 yeah, fly, bro, fly. Yes. Yeah, so need that sleep on that plane. In the meantime, in between time, I have these new jokes that I'm cultivating that I'm shaping. So I'm gonna be at some of these open mic, getting it in, making sure my new set is tight, merging it with my old one. You know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm chilling to the end of October, unless something pop off now. But somebody hit me with a money grab, bitch. I'm on it. I'm on Her. it. <laughs> uh, oh, and shout out to Light Work Nikki. Sorry we missed your event last week. My mother's 60th birthday. Talking about my boo collecting the check in the bag. So shout out to you. I heard your event was a success and I'm proud of you that it was as well. Um and I know you're doing HHS HHF. I'm sorry, T. My bad. No, I'm finished. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure because I, I be trying to listen and talk fucking less. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I know you're doing tomorrow. HHF tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow's HHF. That is going to be my last event for September. Um, I am taking a little mental hiatus for the month of October, but if the money's right, I'm going to pop out. I ain't stupid. Um, <laughs> but you know, I just have a lot of other stuff going on, so just continue to keep me and my family in y'all prayers, mm -hmm. and yeah. Tomorrow will be the last until, hopefully until November. I know I have a few things lined up in November already. So, um, you know, right now it's just more like picky, picky kind of thing and not going so hard. Um, mm -hmm. Until the new year, new year, when things can get all the way right, then I can do what I need to do and, and push things how I need to. But I put a lot of stuff on pause to focus on the things I need to. Um, shout out my mother um, next Friday. Oh, we'll have a show on Wednesday, but next Friday she is retiring. She has been in the work field for over 40, 50 years now. Oh, that's fire. Congrats, mama. And um, yeah, so we're trying to get ready for that in the midst of all we going on. So it's just a lot of, you know, here, there and everywhere kind of thing. So tomorrow wow. you can see me at Oyster Bar though. Me. As DJ Gabby Supreme, we got a lot of artists coming through. I do believe UCB will be playing. I'm not sure on that either, but um, it's still a good time. It's a great networking event for all of anybody. That artists and entrepreneurs and managers and stuff like that. No music, meet producers, things like that, and just want to link up and do the do. Um, I do think that you should just, you know, come out, have a drink, and just, you know, see the vibe for yourself. Should eat some food. They got some good food too. Should I ain't That's drinking food. no more, but I damn sure pull up to the park with a switch and a plate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so yes, I have a new episode out called Fight or Flight, and it's pretty much talking about what you would do if you got caught into a situation, and what do you do when um the people around you put you in certain situations as well. So yeah, make sure y'all check that out. That's on all platforms as well. And I want to just tell everyone, um, finding your peace in the chaos is a, a very complex process, but it's also very easy once you learn how to do it. So you taking time for yourself is actually something that is going to pour back and filling your cup up so that you can pour out back into the world because we definitely make sure um, we need to have your magic and your smile and I miss that you know what I'm saying and I could tell that whatever it is that is um, that you're going through I'm sending all of my healing um, and helpful magical powers over there and making sure that um, tomorrow morning and tonight when I pray that I'm manifesting a lot of good things going your way so mm -hmm. um yeah, make sure that you all take time for yourself and love and light on your journey um, as to whatever it is that you're, that's going on with you. Make sure you all check us out each and every freaking Wednesday at 9 p.m. live um, on WEMS Radio, on Illustrate, on YouTube as well. If you missed us, catch us on 7 On Demand. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And again, love and light to everyone. We are done. Bye. I was born by the river, I was shaking that ass. Bending over, popping pizza, I was making that cat. Bring that ass here, boy. Come